Hi, this essay is about research. It's about using research to evaluate things we find on the internet. We're gonna use lateral reading. Now, Green has three questions. The first two we've spent a little bit of time on. Who's behind a source and what's their purpose? The third question is about evaluating the evidence that the source uses. How credible is that evidence? Now you might say, why do we need evidence? Green gives the example of the new deadly spider that presumably the evidence came from the University of Nebraska, the Department of Entomology. Entomology is about insects and the spider is an arachnoid. But let's move on. If we examine this post on social media, we can see that there's no name for the spider. We see that there are some inconsistencies in the story and that there are no scientists named and no government organizations examining it. There isn't a lot to go on. And therefore, we really don't need to worry about a spider. We try to back it down to its source and we find out that the person who posted this has posted other hoaxes. University of Nebraska has never heard of this person and Snopes and other sources say, there is no deadly spider. Why do we need evidence? Because better information leads to better decision-making, which leads to a better world. That seems simple. What kinds of evidence should we be looking for when we're on the internet? Well, the internet relies on images, photos, data charts, videos, because those are easy to follow. Those speak to us. And they're simpler than reading. But a lot of articles also provide other types of evidence. They list authorities, they have experts, they have statistics. Sometimes we might read about personal experience. Sometimes an author might interview witnesses or they might rely on published sources. These are all forms of evidence and we should become more in tune with looking for evidence saying, What's the evidence? What do they want us to believe? How do we know it's true? Is there any, any evidence? Because better information leads to better decision-making, which also leads to a better world. But how do we evaluate that evidence? Reed offers a few questions that, or Green offers a few questions that we should ask about evidence. Is it reliable? Did it, did it come from a reliable source? We should ask, what is the source of this evidence? Is that source trustworthy? Is it authoritative? Why? That's very much like the first two questions. Green asks us to add, ask, Green suggests asking when we encounter anything on the internet. So we're back to those questions. There's another question he asks, he suggests that we ask, is that evidence relevant? For example, if I make the claim that San Diego is the best city in the United States because of the weather, Relevant information or relevant evidence might be data on average temperatures um, around the year, in the summer, in the winter, in the spring, in the fall, highs, lows, precipitation amounts, all of that would be relevant evidence. If I include evidence about great surf conditions or the zoo, or its proximity to the mountains, none of that is relevant to the claim that San Diego is the best city in the United States because of the weather. 
And so we need to think what's relevant. Does the evidence directly relate to and support the claim being made? So is it reliable concerns the source? Is it relevant means the relationship between the evidence and the claim. And the third question he suggests that we ask is, is there any additional evidence we wanna see before we're fully convinced? Because we can find one statistic that supports something or one authority that supports a claim, but that doesn't mean that everybody is saying the same thing. And so we need to ask, what do other sources say? Green offers this example. Senator Inhofe offers a snowball as evidence that climate change is a hoax. And so we might ask, is that, is this a reliable source? Is Inhofe reliable? Is he an authority to speak about climate change? Is the snowball as evidence relevant? And what do other sources say? So with lateral reading, I would go to Google and I would say, who is Inhofe? And I might read articles about who he is, or I might go straight to Wikipedia. And if I go to Wikipedia, I learn that he's an American politician who serves as US Senator in Oklahoma. He was first elected in 1994. He's a member of the Republican Party. He is the US Senate, he's used to chair the US Senate Committee on the Environment and Public Works. And um, he used to be a representative. I also learn that he's known for his rejection of the scientific consensus on climate change. Now that is interesting to me because he is acting as an authority on climate change and certainly his experience as the chairman for environmental um, legislation in the Senate might suggest that he is, but he also rejects the scientific consensus. The scientific community agrees that the temperature is going up on the planet. That doesn't mean there isn't winter. It just means that overall temperatures are going up. And so if I wanted, I could go here and I could say other sources disagree with him. Um, Is he an expert on climate change? Well, he received a bachelor's degree in economics, which isn't necessary, necessarily related to climate change. And all of that suggests that he's not. So we wanna ask the other question. Is a snowball relevant to the claim that climate change is a hoax? No, because a snowball is evidence of winter somewhere, but not evidence of climate change because climate change is about global warming. And so we might wanna ask, what is climate change? Or is the planet warming? And look, is the planet warming Wikipedia? And so I can get all kinds of information, charts, and I can see here is the planet warming. The source is NASA. And if I want, I can even click to that article. Um, I can scroll all the way down and I can see that, wow, this is a long article. And let's just go straight there. There are external links to other places and many, many articles about the planet warming. You can see the citations keep going and going and going. In fact, 
a lot of this page. Oh, look, more citations. So a lot of people disagree with the senator. So how reliable is the evidence? The source is Inhofe, who is not an authority. Is it relevant? No. What do other sources say? The other sources say that the planet is warming. And so we move on. Now, we talked about, and we've looked at these Fukushima daisies, and you might have wondered, what is or where is Fukushima? And what's the deal with the daisies? Whenever you encounter evidence and you go, I don't even know what that's about, it's a good idea to Google it. Now here's Fukushima. In 2011, a large earthquake and tsunami struck Japan. Um, some of you might remember that event. Um, it caused the tsunami struck Japan, it struck India, it struck the Philippines, it struck Indonesia. It was pretty dramatic. The Fukushima Sachi, I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, um, power plant was damaged. This was um, some nuclear radiation, which can be very harmful to living things leaked from the planet, from the plant. And so this, these are images of daisies. That's very scary because we know that nuclear radiation can be bad. So we wanna think, is the source reliable? Is the evidence reliable? Does it come from a reliable source? Is it relevant? And is there other evidence? So let's go to the initial post that we're looking at. And we can see here's B93. Oh, it's a radio station. So B93 is not a reliable source. A cool picture, but B93 is not an authority. And we don't know who the authority is. There's nothing on this image that shows us where these pictures were taken. Were they taken in Japan? Maybe, maybe not. So we don't even know if this is a relevant picture. So we want to think is there other evidence? And once again, we go to Google because we want to find out. And we can see, let's see, Fukushima daisies. So let's look at a few of these articles. Here's an article from National Geographic. And you're probably familiar with National Geographic um, because of the work that they've done in the past. And so you know that they're a reliable source. And we can see that this original post came from Japan. So that suggests that it might be relevant or reliable. But if we read, we find out that it looks scary, but the plant scientists aren't sure. And the Twitter user actually shared the picture um, 108 miles away from Fukushima, which was disabled. And as we read on, we find that um, scientists say this is a common mutation. In fact, there's one, there's more than one scientist here. So that's just National Geographic. We can see that Snopes says the same thing. Science Alert, um, Huffington Post, Global News, Weather.com, Business Insider, and the Smithsonian are all saying the same thing. Don't freak out over the funky flowers. And so if we go back, we can see that asking the question, how reliable is this piece of evidence? Where did it come from? What's behind the source? Is it relevant? And are there any other sources out there? So we would want to write about that because that's the kind of work we're doing in this essay. And so you might analyze it 
And you might say something like, this post doesn't provide strong evidence about the conditions of the power plant because it doesn't explain what's going on with the daisies. The author only shows that the flowers are deformed, not what caused them to be that way. B93 is a radio station, so this is not authoritative. There is no evidence that this was taken near the power plant, and scientists say this is a common mutation for daisies. So it probably isn't from radioactivity. Now, what I'm doing is I'm taking you to a chart, and you're going to be filling out this chart this week. And here is me filling out about the daisies. Um, it's got posted several times, so I'll adjust this one to reflect what we have. But here is, I'm gonna ask you to find out multiple pieces of information. What source is providing the information and what's the claim the evidence supports? So we would say the source is B93, and the claim is that the daisies are growing in an unusual way because of radiation. What do you know about the source? Is it trustworthy? Well, it's from a radio station, but we don't know who at the radio station posted it, so we don't know anything about the reliability. What evidence? There's a photo. Um, what's the source of the evidence? There's no source who, prov who actually took the picture, so we don't know where it was taken. It's not very trustworthy. Does the evidence directly relate to the claim the source makes? Is it relevant? Well, many things could have caused it to grow that way. We don't know where it was taken. Is it relevant? What do other sources say? And so we would fill in information that says, um, these sources all suggest that daisies often mutate this way, so this is not reliable. Um, so this is not strong evidence of radiation um, poisoning. And then based on your answers to all the questions, how strong is this evidence? And because of the questions about where it came from, and because multiple scientists say this is a common mutation for daisies, this picture is not strong evidence. So you'll notice that on this chart, there are some links. One is for election fraud from 2016. Another one is a picture of a Colorado River estuary. And then there's another picture of migrant suffering. And then there is some textual evidence from the, argue, the article about minimum wage. What I'm gonna ask you to do is to complete this chart. You're going to indicate who is providing the source and what the claim is that it illustrates. You're also going to find out what you can about the source of the evidence. And then you're also going to look at what is the evidence provided? And then what's the source of the evidence? Where you first find the article and the evidence in the article aren't necessarily the same thing. And then is it relevant? What do weather sources say? And your final evaluation. And this will be good practice for your essay. This is that tweet from the Colorado River Estuary. Here's the video. Um, that is the claim that Democrats committed voter fraud. And you're going to look at those three and also the textual evidence. And that's what we're doing right here. That's all I've got. Have fun evaluating. I'll give you feedback when you're done.